Here's a really short video. I'm trying to keep it under five minutes. It's a 3G vertical uphill, eighth inch thick butt joint, full penetration, crystal clear arc shots. Let's do it. Sometimes the biggest challenge on a joint like this is getting comfortable, finding a place to prop. You can see there's just not much of a place to prop here, so I'm propping with one of my TIG fingers. That's going to do two things for me. It's going to protect my fingers from heat. It's also going to help me just kind of scoot up the joint and glide up nice and smooth like that. I'm using a back step sequence on this joint because I want to show how to tie into a previous weld smoothly, how to blend it in. I'm coming up on the end tack here, so I've got to be really careful to start tapering my amperage so that I don't blow that end away. Here's a quick slide on the settings that I used. They're just a guideline. What I think is as important or more important on getting full penetration, full smooth penetration, is filing that edge. A sheared edge looks rough like this. There's lots of oxides on that thing. It's best to smooth them down using a nice clean file. In fact, I have seen it to where when I use the flap disc, especially one that's not designed for aluminum, it smears the oxides and prevents penetration, whereas a file, if it's a good clean file, can work a lot better. All right, well, let's get back to welding. Let's take a look at that puddle now and talk about that a little bit. You want to watch that puddle sink a little bit in between dabs. That'll tell you you're getting full penetration. Coming up on that previous weld here, I'm going to slow down, dab a little less filler, keep moving as I add less and less filler, tapering amperage. From the back side, that looks something like this. I want to keep the amperage going until I get about right here, add less filler, Start tapering amperage. As I taper off the amperage, I kind of move the arc around and swirl to avoid a crater crack. We got a little bit more to weld, so let's take another close up look at that arc shot and try to look at that puddle. That number five cup really confines the cleaning action zone outside the toes of that weld and actually kind of takes that energy and pushes it into the puddle and helps with penetration on a full penetration joint like this. My arc length is about the diameter of the electrode. And again, you can kind of see me swirl the arc around as I taper amperage to avoid leaving that crater crack. A lot of really good TIG welders prefer a number five standard collet body for TIG welding aluminum. This is a number five pink ceramic cup on a water-cooled torch. In this video, we're gonna show a lot of welding and a lot of arc shots using a number five also going to show the clear cup in this combo kit. This kit has a pink ceramic cup as well as a clear cup and the benefits of a clear cup are that you can see things a whole lot better and you'll see that in this video. This kit comes with both split collet and wedge collet. The wedge collet really comes in handy if you're using a 9 air cooled torch because it withstands heat a lot better. Either way it will work with this water cooled torch. This is a low profile setup and gets in a lot of tight spots, works great for a lot of aluminum applications. Let's get to welding. One of the things a number five cup can do, or help you do, is get better penetration on a butt weld or a butt joint. The reason it does that is because it confines the cleaning action and it kind of turns it into putting more energy into the puddle, into the arc. You don't lose cleaning action, you don't lose energy wandering outside. You can see that puddle sinking down in between dabs, that's getting full penetration. And on a joint like this that might be sanded off afterwards, you would need that penetration for, for more strength. And that has been the case on a lot of jobs I've done. They get sanded off afterwards, so you've got to sink that penetration in. This is my friend Brad Goodman pulsing with the foot pedal. And he does that to get an even stack of dimes, but also to get really good penetration, like on this outside corner joint. You can see that puddle sinking in, and it's a much bigger bead than you would normally put on 090 aluminum. I think there's no doubt he's getting full penetration on this. Brad uses a number five cup a lot on these dog feeders that he sells, and the results speak for themselves. Brad likes to use a tapered tip, but some people like to put a little bit of a round area on their tapered tip. And the Dynasty has a ball feature, but any machine that has AC balance, you can use it to round or ball the tip of your tungsten just by cranking the cleaning up to max on your AC balance. And the way you do that is just put it over a clean piece of metal like aluminum or copper, 
and gradually go down on the pedal. Watch the tip very closely. You can see it's getting really bright. That's because it's getting really hot. In this case, that's what I like is just a slight rounded tip on my taper. Let's take another quick look at one of those butt joints. This is another angle, but you can still kind of see that puddle sinking and dropping and getting full penetration. And the tip is staying uniform through weld after weld because I put that rounded tip on there. A little swirl at the end to prevent a crater dot. And that's that. Now we're going to take a look at some welds done with the clear cup. The combo kit has one of each. The collet body for the clear cup has a double O-ring and that works better if you use this low profile insulator that comes in the combo kit. Pop it on. I'm going to use the wedge collet for this one also. I'm going to bottom that out. I'm going to moisten the O-rings with my finger, a little spit, and then just twist the clear cup on and that's all there is to that. I'll put a nice little 332 2% lanthanated electrode in there and we are ready to weld. This is Brad Goodman again using his pedal pumping technique on a little fillet weld T-joint and he's using a clear cup and you can see how that just kind of lights everything up. Helps you see the puddle, helps you see where you're going, helps you see where you've been. I've said this many times, but I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical on them, but I saw right away that not, they not only helped me film the arc better, but they really helped me see better. Coming up is another example of just how it lights the path up and helps you see where you're going. You can see that etching line. You can see that edge and see exactly where that puddle is melting that edge. You can see it wetting in on the front edge of the puddle. You can see whether or not you get a crater dot at the end. But there is a downside to clear cups. They're not as durable as ceramic. If you drop them, if you trip over the cable and they hit the concrete, they will break. A TIG torch holder helps with that. This video showed the Alley 5 combo kit for 9 and 20 style torches. We also have a kit for 17, 18, 26 style torches. If you're not sure what style torch you have, go to weldmonger.com. We've got some good graphics. This picture right here pretty much clears it up for most people. And the great thing about a kit is that you're sure that every part in that kit is going to work with your torch.